This is a 30-minute presentation of major news, views, interviews, comments, and analysis about Liberia, Africa, and our one world. Today is Tuesday, November 20. The year remains 2018. My name is Zokwe Beslo Conan, anchoring this edition of the program. In the headlines, President George Manawia wants labor laws of Liberia harmonized in order to promote decent work environment. Voting is currently taking place in Montserrado and San counties in order to enhance food security stakeholders on the implementation of land tenure and governance presents communique to the government for proper administration of land and away from liberia ethiopia has been ranked the worst country for lack of access to toilets these stories plus many other developments are all coming up in the program on tv news live but first we are taking a short break to be back with the faces of the newsmakers Welcome back to LN TV News Live. We continue with the program. President George Manawia is calling on labor sector stakeholders to find ways of harmonizing the inconsistencies in the labor laws of Liberia. The Liberian leader said such reform will go a long way in creating a decent work environment for both workers and employers across the country. President Wea was speaking Monday at the start of the first ever national labor conference in Monrovia. A number of important reforms have been made in addressing the needs and rights of the former domestic and casual workers in the private sector, including the launching of the national employment policy and the centralization of labor union on a Latino labor complex. However, all the sector employees a government on the civil service agency is ten hour, where there is no recognition of the international labor organization, a certain point there is neither participation in any of its functions, nor compliance with its convention. This has not been required by given of the servants to exercise some of their basic rights and work on the Liberian Constitution, as well as the ILO conventions, to which Nigeria is a signatory. But it are also there to labor market stillness and confusion in administration governance in the Nigeria labor sector. It is therefore a sincere wish that this national labor conference will produce a conducive atmosphere for us to do this, so that lawmakers and members of the judiciary, international partners, and the liberal leadership of Nigeria avoid constructive discussions about all aspects of the Nigerian labor law with a view to harmonizing all inconsistencies. <laughs> The president is at the same time admonishing union leaders to always use dialogue to address critical issues affecting the labor force. As a Change. But it is a 21st century where 
Yeah, uh, only you know, like the restaurants at eight o'clock and six o'clock we close, but we have um, we even where electricity is available, we always have uh, alternative uh, uh, making this important place. Uh, all of our polling places got light, uh, uh, not necessarily electricity, but we have mm -hmm. light that can uh, help us to do a, 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 a very transparent counting after the the uh, uh, polling close. So we are not worried about the, I mean, we need general, generally we need electricity, but sure. when it comes to the counting of the ballots and uh, our activities at the zero polling places, uh, we're going to show you that we have measures uh, uh, in place. The commission, the way we do a license, uh, the, uh, the, the Liberians that we recruit, the temporary staff that we recruit, mm. along with agents of the political parties, are the people that are ready at the polling places. It is important to ensure transparency for political parties to be represented. Meanwhile, Councillor Jerome Kokoya says the National Elections Commission, along with other partners of the security apparatus, are investigating chaotic pre-elections violence that occurred over the weekend during the close of campaign in District 13 in Montserrat County. There are provisions in the election law and our regulations are controlling regulations uh, prohibiting uh, election violence. Uh, so those provisions will be resorted to. But right now, with respect to what happened over the weekend, mm -hmm. I would not want to comment on it because uh, the commission is working with law enforcement not to, to conduct the appropriate investigation. As you know, uh, there have been some allegations of people got uh, getting uh, uh, injured uh, that might fall within the criminal run mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, the law enforcement people would be uh, responsible for. Um, there are the regulatory aspects uh, uh, where political parties would be held by the commission responsible if they violated those regulations are prohibit uh, prohibit uh, uh, violence. Uh, but we want to work along with the law enforcement and then uh, get the root of this, even though we're having all sort of information coming, but none of the information has been confirmed by independent source yet. So uh, uh, we do know that uh, all of the candidates, all of the parties that are participating were supposed to be in particular areas. Uh, if you left your area to go in another area without a proper cause, uh, that would be another matter to uh, consider. Next, Chairman Jerome Kokoya speaking in an interview with the station Monday ahead of the by-elections in Montserrat District 13 and San County. As some of you may be aware, violence erupted in Montserrat County District 13 when supporters of rival candidates attacked, allegedly attacked each other. Whilst investigation is still ongoing, the opposition Unity Party has expressed dismay over the fact that some of their partisans were brutalized. Curtis Dolly is the youth chair of the opposition Unity Party. As a party, we are in deep sympathy with those who are wounded and hurt by this brutality and assault. Of course, we are in deep sympathy with many of our compatriots who are critical as we speak to you today. We are aware that you are in, be aware that you are in our hearts and prayers. We are highly disappointed in yesterday's event. I saw firsthand and the brutality against peaceful citizens and partisans of the Trapata ongoing arrangement in our country. This is not what democracy looks like. Curtis Dolly is the youth chair of the opposition Unity Party. Meanwhile, the chairman of the ruling coalition for democratic change, Moba Molu, says their supporters in no way supported or participated in elections violence over the weekend. And so we were not surprised yesterday in the aftermath of the success of that rally, which tripled any campaign closure effort of the other candidates. Uh, when we saw different outlets reporting complete falsehood, fabrication, liberal lies, we were quite aware 
the, the distortions that followed the success of the yesterday rally was based on the fact that the opposition political parties that have lying behind the weaker candidates in District 13 have lost faith in the process. They've come to realize they cannot win. They are defeated. They cannot make a comeback. And so they are, they've resorted to propaganda initiatives, lies, fairy tale, and inventing fallacies that is not rooted in fight. And what was surprising is Moba Moli is the national chairman of the ruling coalition for democratic change CDC. If you have just joined us, this is a reminder that you are watching Ellen TV News Live, a 30 minute presentation of major news, bills, interviews, comments, and analysis shifting the destiny of Liberia, Africa, and our global village. Today is Tuesday, November 20. The year remains 2018. My name is Zokwe Beslo Conan, anchoring this edition of the program. Let's recap major stories we have followed or are following on the program this morning. President George Manawia wants labor laws of Liberia harmonized in order to promote decent work environment. Several electorates in Monserrado and Sandu counties are in queues to vote in the representative by elections currently taking place in both counties. In order to enhance food security, stakeholders on the implementation of land tenure and governance present communicate to the government for proper administration of land and away from Liberia, Ethiopia has been ranked the worst country for lack of access to toilets. Ellen TV News Live takes a short break to be back in split seconds. Welcome back. We continue with more developments. Stakeholders and participants on the implementation of the National Land Policy and Voluntary Guidelines on Responsible Governance of Tenure of Land are calling on relevant authorities to fully implement the policy on land governance. Reading the communique on behalf of the participants, Wiltoria Sheldon called for proper regulation and administration of land in Liberia to enhance food security. By the stakeholders' joint efforts to advocate for speedy enactment of the fertilizer, pesticides, seed, food feed, and the standard laboratory bills. Two, that all stakeholders join their efforts to advocate for funding, development of regulations, and proper implementation of the land rights and other relevant laws. To use the principles of the VGT the land rights law and the local government law to inform and educate the public in all counties in Liberia on their tenure rights and to enable citizens to fully enjoy their rights and understand their responsibilities in close collaboration with their traditional leaders. That greater efforts be made to increase public awareness of governance of tenure of land fisheries and forests by producing simplified versions of the land rights law, radio programs, and organizing town hall meetings for the wider public covering all information on relevant legal, institutional, and policy frameworks. Receiving the communique, FAO country representative Maria 2J termed the document as ambitious and vowed her organization's commitment to the process. Um, we at FAO will provide you all the necessary support that will facilitate the timely and efficient um, implementation of the recommendations um, made during this workshop. I said earlier the communique is a bit um, ambitious, but I think it is something that, that can be done and achievable. And together with all of you as partners and stakeholders, you know, we can work together you know, to achieve you know, um, our objectives you know, that we set for ourselves. Maria Tuji is FAO country representative for his part. Agriculture Minister's Praxi 
Halala Kokulu said the ministry will play a crucial role in implementing the communique. So I really want to admonish every one of you, our traditional leaders that are here, and all of the, our colleagues from civil society uh, organizations as well, and all the agency as well. Uh, it was not a mistake also by making the Minister of Agriculture the lead of this initiative. As my fellow uh, platform guests just mentioned, Agriculture played a major role when it comes to land turning, when it comes to land use. So the idea of selecting the, the Minister of Agriculture to, to chair this uh, steering committee was a very welcoming one. And I just want to reaffirm our commitment to the process that we begin down the line, that we will always be uh, willing and always keep our doors open to continue our coordination and partnership with this initiative. Halala Kokulo is a proxy of the Minister of Agriculture. The African Development Associates' ideas with funding from the Youth Bridge Incorporated has concluded its research on a culture of smoking in Liberia. Speaking at a press conference recently, African Development Associates' ideas lead consultant James Como outlined the objective of the research. After the war, we found out that uh, most of our young people are smoking, and they are just not smoking regular tobacco, but they are smoking uh, major substances that are causing harm to themselves. So as Ambassador Wilma correctly said, the research was undertaken in four counties, Bomi, Lofa, Nima, and Maserati. We all know that the scope of research at the time decided upon the, the availability of funding and other issues. So, the research was confined to four counties. We went to 11 communities and uh, we interviewed 44 females and 141 males, constituting 24 and 76 percent respectively. Uh, the methodology took into consideration both qualitative methods and quantitative methods. That is, we, we wear literature both national and uh, international literature, literature for religious statistics that were given by religious on uh, smoking during the last democratic health detail and uh, the, the last uh, religious report. We also read some other documents from the Ministry of Health, we read international documents. So we developed a questionnaire that took into consideration focus group discussion, structured questionnaire. We did training and uh, we had pilot testing, text anal data analysis, quality check, all of the regular requirements to do a real substantive research work. Those requirements were taken into consideration. James Cuomo is the lead consultant of the African Development Associates Ideas. Also speaking was the supervisor of ideas, Ms. Florence Sanga, stating the cause and effect of the culture of smoking. 8% of the respondents we talked to said that when you smoke, it helps them ease their stress and then they forget about their frustration. And peer pressure, majority of the respondents said that peer pressure is the root cause of smoking. And the majority, maybe 63% of the respondents we interviewed on the field said peer pressure is the root smoking. They are encouraged by friends. And then when they are doing job associated with pool and washing cars and money garages and nights, they have to smoke in order to withstand the pool during the night. Other respondents say unemployment also helps them to start smoking because when they are less busy, they don't have any job doing, they miss with friends who smoke and then they smoke all day to pass the time. Florence Sanga is the supervisor at ideas post and telecommunications minister councillor cooper Kra, at the head of, of a seven man government delegation has returned to the country following their participation in the itu planning potentiary meeting recently in dubai back in monrovia reporter james Peku asked minister Kura if liberia stands to benefit anything from the international telecommunications union following the meeting there was a resolution, resolution number 34, specifically highlighted Liberia as one of the because we had made a case that 
some of the uh, we are behind with most of our ICT uh, programs because of the civil war like, that we had in Liberia. Then we spoke about the uh, the border uh, uh, epidemic, and then all of these made us to, to lag behind with most of the program. But as we speak, we now have an e-program. The e-government program is going, which is which is, and we're doing we're trying to reach out. We also informed them that our our fiber cable ring around Monrovia is working, and and the president is interested to make sure that we connect all of our capital, the provisional capital in the area, you know, of our different political subdivisions should be connected to make to make uh, communication accessible to our people, even up to the rural area. And and uh, but we need assistance, we need some help. So uh, the resolution 34 of the of the ITU this year uh, made specific reference to Liberia and named Liberia as one of those countries to benefit from uh, from assistance to expand its uh, ICT programs in Liberia. Earlier in Dubai, Minister Kura had the opportunity to be a guest of the RTU television station, where he explains what government is doing to expand telecommunications in Liberia. I'll tell you what we're doing right now. We are now um, working out, looking at our backbone, and, and, and you know, we were lucky that the ICT cable, the Europe to Africa cable, landed in our capital city. And through the assistance of UCAID uh, and, and the World Bank, to some extent, now we have the fiber cables. At, now we're building a fiber ring around Monrovia, the capital city. And we like to see that connectivity not only in Monrovia, but we have put, uh, 15 political subdivisions. We are now working out, finding funding to, to extend the backbone to all of the political subdivisions. That is the only way we see the real results of the fiber uh, distribution in Liberia. And uh, we think um, this is working, it's working for us. And I think, I think we, begin, we have begun to, to see the results because now most of our business partners in Liberia, they want to have the fiber connection. They want to be able to transact businesses just by just the, 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 the fingertip of a, of, of, of a phone or something like that. And that's been very encouraging. And I think the government of Liberia fully endorsed almost all of the programs of, of the ITU. And uh, they've encouraged us to be a part of all of the programs we have here for this for this potentiary. And we like to take something back home so that we have some of the officials of, of ITU to visit Liberia and say, look, what are you doing? And we, we'll show you some those things that we're doing based upon the benefits we've reaped from, from the discussion like we've had here during the, during the course of, this, of the past two weeks. Councillor Cooper Christ, the Minister of Post and Telecommunications. Providence Baptist Church Pastor Reverend Dr. Samuel Reeves says God uses the ordinary person to carry out his will. Speaking at the induction service of the pastor-elect of the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Congo Town, Reverend Reeves called on the church to, to wait on God in one accord. He spoke on the theme, doing the impossible. Lighthouse in Liberia, for the most part, God does not use only spiritual means God does not use extraordinarily dignified, big headed, self centered, know it all, nobody can touch me better than everybody else kind of people to change the world. Amen. God uses ordinary people. Yes. People who, who know that they can't do anything without the help of God. Folks who know that they may have a degree, but that degree can't take them to where God wants them. People who would say to God, Lord, I'm nothing without you. Yes. Yes. Listen, Lighthouse, your, your obedience required some things. It required that you must know that God expects of you 
Because God has placed inside of you something that God expects from you. Reverend that Sir Samuel Reeves is the pastor of the Providence Baptist Church in Remarks Lighthouse Baptist Church inducted pastor Reverend By Anderson pledged his commitment to work with every department of the church. The vision of God changing me from first to light had come to pass. I didn't come here to stay for long. But I came here to do God's will. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to be favored. Mm -hmm. I came here to do God's work. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to be loved or become somebody's friend. Mm -hmm. I came here to respect God's command. Reverend By Anderson is the newly inducted pastor of the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Congo Town. Let's now bring you our foreign development. Ethiopia has been ranked the worst country for lack of access to toilets. For the second year in a row, the charity Water Aid has highlighted Ethiopia's poor record when it comes to access to toilets at home. On World Toilet Day, it has reported that 93% of Ethiopians lack basic sanitation where they live, making it the lowest ranked nation on the continent. For Chad, Madagascar, and South Sudan, the figure is 90%. In Sub Saharan Africa, over or more than 340 million children do not have access to a decent toilet, thereby increasing the risk of death. Like from diseases like diarrhea, water it says. The report also highlighted the lack of toilets in schools for children with 60% of schools in a region without toilets. That does it from the foreign scene. Let's now recap major stories we have followed on the program this morning. President George Manawia wants labor laws of Liberia harmonized in order to promote decent work environment. Several electorates in Montserrado and San counties are in queues to vote in a representative by elections currently taking place in both counties. In order to enhance food security, stakeholders on the implementation of land tenure and governance presents communique to the government for proper administration of land. And away from Liberia, Ethiopia has been ranked the worst country for lack of access to toilets. Well, this is how we come to the end of the program, Ellen TV News Live. Many thanks to you all for your viewing role. Many thanks to all of our reporters, correspondents, technicians, switchers, and editors for making this package a success. Ellen TV News Live is a production of the television department of the Liberia Broadcasting System. This program comes on every Monday to Friday with the early edition at 10 to 10.30 in the morning and the late edition at 8 to 8.30 in the evening. On behalf of the entire television team, my name is Zokwe Beslow Conan Avin, anchoring this edition. Have a pleasant day. Bye-bye for now.